Mall of America. For more than 30 years, it has been a retail leader and an international destination, and it remains the largest mall in the U.S. Not to mention it welcomes millions of guests from around the world. It's huge, but it's also so much more. In this podcast, you're going to hear the real stories of how it started and why it continues to thrive. You'll hear about challenges we faced along the way and what you can learn from them. We will feature guests and experts from all walks of life and business. And along the way, you'll laugh, learn, and maybe even change the way you look at things. So if you're a fan of the mall, a brand new visitor, an entrepreneur, or a dreamer, prepare to dive deep into so much more. This podcast is presented by the Bloomington Convention and Visitors Bureau. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this episode of So Much More. I am your host, Dan Jasper, here at Mall of America. My co-host, colleague, and friend, Grant Bunchy. Grant, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks, Dan. Thank you for joining me today. We're going to have a great conversation. Mall of America is big, right? It's huge. 520 stores, millions of guests every year, huge events going on uh, that are nonstop, a giant aquarium. And there's so much to talk about. And that's one of the reasons we called this podcast so much more. But we're going to talk about something really unique today. We're, we're honored to have two very special guests with us today. Rachel Zuleger. Close. Yes. I did it. <laughs> Aaron Lando Luther. Sorry, I was paranoid about getting Rachel's last name wrong, so I've asked her like eight times. And, um, that was good. They are, they are the owners and operators of, um, of a specialty uh, photography shop here at Mall of America, Professor Z's. A lot of people may know it as old-time photos. It is, you may not know this, it is one of the original stores at Mall of America, opened in 1992, still running strong and uh Rachel and Lando have a story to share with us today. Welcome, guys. How are you? Thanks for having us. Yeah, great. Doing great. great. Yeah, it's fun to have you here. We were talking ahead of time and really want to get a sense of who you are. And I'm going to start with Rachel, right? Because it kind of all started with you. How did you get involved with this business originally? And and how did you evolve into owning it and operating it? Yeah, well, um, I came to uh, Minneapolis uh, to go to, uh, university of Minnesota. Yep. And as a freshman, my roommate and some friends, we came to the mall of America and, uh, did an old time photo. So, um, dressed as we were flappers. Yep. yep. Oh. We were flapper <laughs> girls. Nice. And, um, I had always wanted to do one and it was affordable enough that three college students could, could get <laughs> photos done. And so we, you know, hung that photo proudly in our dorm room and, uh, a couple years later, I uh, came in for an interview to uh, to work there because I was a theater major and a photography uh, student at the U of M, and it seemed like that was the place for me to be. <laughs> so you were part-time, but then you advanced there, correct? Yeah, so then um, I became the manager in well, 2005. I've been there for a long time. But <laughs> yeah, I became the manager in 2005 and uh, uh, met Landon shortly thereafter. So uh, I said Lando landed, oh, but, yes. but, but Lando. you go yeah, by Lando, yeah, I go right? Yeah, by both. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. perfect. We'll do that. And I just have to ask the, the final part of this question, if yeah. that's all right, Grant, is Lando is tell me how you got involved and how you first met. Well, uh, back, uh, back in around 2005, uh, I was taking care of my grandmother uh, who needed some assistance getting through the day. And when we did that, uh, we would always plan field trips. Uh, the field trips usually uh, had us ending at Mall of America. Mm -hmm. uh, so much to do, and they could be a different thing that we did at the mall every time we came. So uh, we would come here uh, and do some fun stuff and, and kill time and uh, help uh, uh, help my grandma kind of get through the day and uh, have some fun with her so she's not just sitting at home all day. Sure. And one of, the, one of those days we came and... Uh, went into old time photos. And uh, that's when I first saw Rachel and was, uh, was smitten, we'll call it, we'll say. <laughs> and it. Uh, Great she, word. she was so, she was so kind to us and patient with my grandmother who was, you know, uh, uh, her mobility wasn't the greatest. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this, 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 this girl is fantastic. And we had so much fun. And back in the day where the, where the photos weren't instant, we had to come back. We had to come back to get those uh, today. You know, they come out in seconds, but, um, you know, we had a 20 or 30 minute wait. And 
uh, my heart was in my chest because yeah. this was going to be the first time that I wanted to ask a girl out. I have always been, I guess, fortunate enough to have someone ask me out on a date that I had never asked a girl uh, out on a date before. And so I consulted my grandmother, of course, right? <laughs> uh, my very uh, strong-willed German grandmother <laughs> uh, just told me like it was. She's like, you know, don't be a wimp. Yeah. <laughs> just, just tell her that you like her and want to buy her dinner. I was like, well, that seems simple enough. I think I can, I, I think I can get uh, those words out. And so I'm practicing. Grandma's giving me tips on how to ask a girl out. I was probably, what, 22, 23 years old. And, I, uh, and we went back, and Rachel wasn't there. And uh, so I was like, oh, no. Uh, an another, uh, another employee was working there and showed us our photos and, and got us rung out. And I just I said, you know what? Uh, what happened to the photographer that helped us? And Rachel ended up being on lunch break. So now I'm, I didn't have a plan B. I was gonna, uh, I was gonna uh, ask her face to face. Well, I had a little crinkle of paper in my pocket, and I pulled that out, and I wrote my uh, my name and number on it, and asked that girl if she could give this to Rachel. Uh, it happened to be the wheelchair receipt <laughs> of of the rental here in the mall. So I thought that would give me a little bit of leverage. Yeah, right? very Remember sure. me? I'm the yes, nice guy exactly. with my grandmother. <laughs> yeah, you know, a little uh, reminder yeah, that goes right there. Yeah, that sounds good. And if that didn't work, uh, I followed up with a, a physical comic card. Again, this wasn't. Uh, this wasn't the online reviews. This was a physical card that I filled out and put a stamp on and, and mailed in and uh, sung her praises. And uh, this was um, the, the, previous, the previous owner uh, uh, got in touch with Rachel and sent it to her and said, oh, you got a great review. And she probably matched up the wheelchair receipt with this comic card and the name. Uh, and, uh, you know, probably a, a couple weeks later, I got a phone call. And well, I had to call. After yeah, that. for sure. Like, <laughs> yeah. Comic card. Yeah, what was your reaction when you got the receipt with the receipt. phone number? I was like, oh, you know, some guys would use like a puppy or children. <laughs> says using his grandma. I, 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 I'm <laughs> Which actually worked. It worked. It worked. Yeah. Yeah, it worked. It worked. <laughs> I love it. How many stars did you give her? Oh, it was it was a raving review. I think I ran out of space <laughs> writing and <laughs> just yep. smiley faces and yep. uh, <laughs> oh, I love all that it. stuff. And the, you know, the rest is history. I never thought he would be the owner one day. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, I've always had uh, a, a passion, and you know, like oh, I want to own my own business. I didn't know what that was, but uh, once Rachel and I uh, started dating and saw her passion for the business, I was like, I'm investing in Rachel. You know, this is, this is a great opportunity. And um, I, have a, I have a finance background, uh, banking background, which only lends its hand uh, really in the back, the kind of the back end side of the business. So that's where uh, I like to do that kind of stuff. And Rachel's uh, so great with the front end of the business. So we've, we've uh, made a pretty good go of it. So you own and operate it together. Yep. yep. Um, What's it like on those days when you're working together all day and then you go home and uh, on the good days and bad days? What's it like? Are there challenges being around each other all the time? Or Actually, uh, I was a bit nervous when he decided to, you know, go all in and, and decide that he was also going to work in because I was like, oh, no, you know, like we'll be spending so much time together and yeah. what's it, you know, we'll have different ideas about stuff. It actually is working out really great um so it, you know back in the day when he was working full-time corporate job and i was working managing full-time we wouldn't see each other mm. hardly at all so oh, this yeah. way at least we get to to see each other and yeah it's nice to have you know someone who always has your back there too <laughs> you mentioned a little bit of like hey my background is finance i work behind the scenes like Talk to us a little bit more about like how you guys divide up who does what and like how you structure that and the flexibility within that as well. Well, you know, if I mean, technically we're 50-50, we're but Rachel's the boss. All right. <laughs> Rachel is uh, the, the Z and Zoolegger. She is Professor Z. I mean, I, okay. sort, I, I sort of sense that. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm glad you said and, it. And, and, uh, and, and, and I'm proud to say that, too. So uh, she she does get the last say in things. But um, oh, we just... Uh, I guess our, our communication so well that, um, you know, anything that has to do with like a spreadsheet or payroll or taxes or anything like that, Emails. it's just, 
uh, those all emails, you know, terrible. all the, all the uh, administrative stuff has just been um, stuff that I enjoy mm -hmm. doing and, and will do, whereas I have a phobia of photography and, <laughs> and taking pictures <laughs> and, and being in the front of the store sometimes where Rachel has the, the personality and has uh, uh, developed a staff where they're, they're crushing it out front yeah. and I'm just making sure everything's uh, tidy in the back end of the business. So it's never been a, a really a conflict for us as to who does what. Yeah. It's been uh, pretty well defined from the get go, yeah. just based on our backgrounds and uh, yeah, what you we didn't like have to, to sit down and be like divide out tasks. It's just sort of naturally yes. where you guys are yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, that's great. Yep. You know, Rachel, for those who have never visited old time photos, which is what I'm always going to call it. I apologize for no, that. That's, that's what it is the most to me, right? Place. Yeah. And and, and um, I can't imagine any Minnesotan who's not been there. But for those who haven't, where are you located within Mall of America? What is it? And I know you've expanded some designs and stuff. Tell us about that. Yeah. Okay. So it's 374 north side of the mall. So it's near the North Food Court. It's near the Moose Mountain Adventure Golf. Um, and uh, it's... It's a great place to to spend a little bit of time. Uh, we have costumes that you get dressed up in, um, nine different styles that you can get dressed up in, uh, you know, from Victorian, Civil War, uh, Pirates, Renaissance, Roaring Twenties, Western, uh, Vikings. You can do Vikings, too. Um, not Minnesota Vikings. We're no, talking like, authentic uh, Vikings, yeah, well, right? Well, maybe not authentic. With a like, Hollywood pseudo. twist. <laughs> yeah, you know, the <laughs> horns the horns on the helmet weren't... But uh, not purple and gold. Uh, not purple, not and, purple gold. and gold. No, yeah. fur and uh, <laughs> helmets. Yeah, so uh, we get you dressed up, take a bunch of different uh, photos, uh, and then you get to view the photos, choose what you want. Um, it's like the perfect way to, you know be entertained, have fun, and then also get that great souvenir or great photo. Um, it's kind of, in this day and age, we're not, people aren't doing a lot of like family photos or professional photos. So to have, you know, to still be around yeah. <laughs> and still be relevant is, is great. And I, it's, it's all about the experience of like getting dressed up, getting into costume. You don't have to plan your outfits or, make someone sit through a tedious, you know, shoot. It's usually like a, a real fun shoot. So. And, and what you're doing is you're helping families or friends create memories. Absolutely. And capture a moment in time, something that yes. they'll be able to tell that story about forever, right? They Absolutely. go home and they go to their parents' house. Maybe they were kids when they took a family photo at Old Time Photos and they can still laugh about it and talk about how one of them was cranky that day yes. and yeah. and how the cost I didn't want that costume right. or whatever, right? So you're really creating moments for families. Yeah, and those families come back and do recreation photos oh. 20 years later. Like Love and it. I've been around long enough that I can be like, "Oh yeah, that's when we were down in you know, Camp Snoopy and like I may have taken this photo for you back then. <laughs> like, yeah. so let's let's update it now. Um, but yeah, that's and that's kind of where my first introduction was too, is I grew up seeing this photo on the wall of these cowboys, and I was always like, What is what is this? And it was my dad and his brothers in the 70s got an old time photo taken, huh. and I was always fascinated by it. And I was just like, you know, I've always loved costumes and, yeah. and everything like that. They're so, fun. so yeah, that's how I kind of like first became like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Like, how can I, how can I do that? Have so. you recreated your, uh, freshman photo that you told the story of? Like, have you guys got back together? And then, no, like, uh. I haven't. I have separately, those people have come back in, but, um, we would take a photo after I started working at old times, we would take roommate photos, um, every year and like make Christmas cards and send them to our right. families. And then we'd like, we would do it right before we would like have a party at our apartment and we'd hang them up on, <laughs> on the wall. Um, and, Ironically, now one of my roommates is actually our manager there. So, nice. so yeah, it really came full circle. Another theater, another theater guy that just like found a home here. So, you mentioned those different themes, that, yeah. you know, that you could dress up. What's the most popular one? Oh, it's it's Western, Western, Western yeah. and 1920s. 1920s yeah. 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 Does it sort of go over time? Like you've been there a while. Like was there a period where Flappers was really popular, and then it was Western, and then Vikings or uh, Western and 1920s always always win because okay. people like the the money and the bar scene and the you know you can have guns and booze and stuff like that. Um, uh, but we've seen a recent surge in like the. Um, 70s 
Civil War era, which not necessarily like Civil War style, like, but the the big hoop dresses. Yeah. So oh. There's been a surge of like <clears throat> ladies wanting to wear those dresses, like just in the past couple years that it's like we're doing a lot of that. So cool. I mean, it's very different from what we wear today. So yeah. I understand that. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I have a question for Grant actually oh. that I'd love for you to to share. Um, we have a small business yes. here with us, right? With Rachel and Lando and they're entrepreneurs. And when people think of Mall of America, oftentimes they think of chain stores and big stores. We actually have a real, we have a mix and we have other small businesses. Can you talk really briefly about what the importance of having that type of a mix is? Yeah. I mean, I think people think of Mall of America and the size and they, like Dan said, they always think about the big stores, but in reality, um, we know that our guest wants to shop, shop local. There is a lot of people that want to support small businesses. And from the marketing standpoint, like we want to promote those small businesses. So we work a lot with making sure that we are getting what those businesses are to the community, um, getting them connected, right? There's lots of different networks of businesses and, and tenants here that do promotions together and work together. And a lot of times we're facilitating those conversations, but it, there's definitely a rise in our sort of our guest sentiment of them being more aware of where they're shopping, right? Yeah. And yeah. Um, that's factoring into their decisions. And we want to help um, communicate those things out as we go forward too. So Yeah, we love, I know our marketing team works hard. They love to highlight entrepreneurs and yep. small locally owned businesses like yours, uh, which is one of the reasons we're visiting today. I mean, we love, you've been amazing tenants and partners with them all for years now. And, um, but you go beyond old time photos. Yes. You also do something during the holiday season. I, I don't remember what it's called <laughs> exact. What is that again? I, I believe you're referring to uh, the Santa experience. That's it. Yes. I remember. Tell us yes. about that, please. Rachel, do you want to start or should I? Go for it. Oh, um, well, uh, the Santa Experience, obviously a seasonal business operating in November and December where we offer uh, unique uh, private uh, visits with Santa Claus. So, you know, people uh, really appreciate the appointments. People appreciate not waiting in line anymore. You know, a lot of people remember back in the day where it'd be hours long wait. And yeah. actually that yeah. was the... Uh, uh, one of the reasons and um, kind of the birth behind the Santa experience back in 2007 was uh, the, the mall would open, Santa would open, and then there was a six-hour line on Saturday <laughs> that basically took up the whole day. And um, uh, I was like, well, something's got to give. And, yeah. and appointments now have become um, uh, so important and almost um, uh, kind of mainstay with like uh, – uh, other businesses like oh I'm gonna make an appointment for this I'm gonna people are making more appointments for things and I like to show up and not have that wait time and um, so that's what we're offering we're offering not only just uh, Santa visits but unique in the sense that we have a multi uh, cultural Santa base yes Talk so, about that yeah we have uh, right now we have uh, five Santas um, we've got uh, two um, two black Santas uh, one Asian Santa uh, we got a couple white Santas. One of them speak in Spanish, so you know we, in in just interacting with our guests who come back year after year after year, uh, aren't shy to give the feedback of you know what works, what doesn't work, what can you do, and that's that's really been the the driving uh, factor. And in uh, 2016, when Rachel and I were fortunate enough to open up a second space due to popularity, yep. that's what we wanted to focus on. Was like let's. Uh, let's hire a Santa of color yeah. and uh, let's see what happens. And <laughs> I, I, I remember that uh, so very, <laughs> very vividly, right? And, um, and Santa Larry, right? Yes. Santa Larry. Yeah. And, and I remember I had a friend who happens to be a, a, a white woman married to a, uh, an African-American gentleman. They have a child and she was so grateful. And she said, thank you. I mean, thanking me. I had nothing to do with it, right? <laughs> but I think you heard this from many guests as well, is thank Absolutely. you for meeting us where our families are. My kids can relate to what you're offering us, right? Yep. Tell us about a family story, how, they, how this impacts them, Rachel, when they come and visit. Oh, well, yeah, I've been fortunate enough to be in the room when kind of the magic is happening there with Santa Larry and definitely that first year, which we didn't know, you know, it was our first year of kind of expansion. We had always um, just had one Santa before. Uh, 
we saw the families come in and especially once the word got out, you know, nationally, internationally, like we had a lot of interest there um, for Santa Larry, but uh, just a a grandmother, sorry if I get choked up, but there was a grandmother in with her um, grandkids and her kids and she's just weeping and she's hugging Santa Larry and she's like, I never had this opportunity. I've never had this. And for us, it's the, it's that those kids are not going to know any different. They'll have always seen, um, you know, a Santa that looks like them. So that's the best part for us is that like, you know, it was so emotional for this, for this grandmother and these parents who never had this opportunity, but the kids are now just not going to know that it, you know, wasn't a thing before, you know? So we're just, that's, that's just been really rewarding, really great to see. And, And the one thing you've done with the several different Santas that you offer is that you are careful, at least in my perspective, to work with Santas who are compassionate and caring and really believe in connecting with people, right? These are good people. That's the sense I get, right? Um, outside of their them, you know, playing uh, Santa Claus, uh, that's what we are when we're interviewing and meeting these folks. We uh, we pick up on uh, that. Uh, almost right away. Like, why are, why are you doing this? That's one of the questions we ask, like, why are you doing this? You know, um, can't, can't say that, you know, in the industry that all Santas are doing it for the right reason, right? (laughs) Um, You know, if if money's the first thing that comes up in a conversation of meeting a Santa, that's a red flag to us. You know, uh, obviously our Santas are paid, but we want them to be talking about, you know, bringing the magic of Christmas and, um, you know, being so open-minded and uh, these these guys that we have now, um, uh, I admire for the fact that they they have just a huge heart and it translates so well in a Santa visit and and they're they're doing it for the the right reason and that's something we're proud of as as well is that we've uh, and lucky lucky to be able to be yeah. picky about yep. who we who we hire uh, in in our Santas and uh, we're proud of them and what they've done and uh, you know are proud of ourselves for creating a, a platform now where hopefully, um, you know, Santa's of color, it's like a, it's just a, uh, it's just a regular thing. You yep. know, it's no, hopefully, you know, someday, you know, we're talking about, it, it's not, it's not a big deal. It's anymore. not an issue. It's yeah. just a normal, an it's just a normal thing. Yeah. How do you, just out of curiosity, like, how do you find Santas? You're like, oh, I interviewed him. Like, is there like a database of Santas? Like, <laughs> yeah. walk behind like the, d- yeah. the oh, Santa wow. finding yeah, side of things. Great general. question. So <laughs> yeah, there, I mean, there actually is. There's groups in most of the states that are like Santas get together and form a, a group, and then you contact the administrator, and they get the word out, and then people mm. can send in and, and apply. Um, we, I mean, when we started, when we when we started our second location, um, there weren't Santas of color in the, in the Minnesota group. Mm. There are now, which is amazing. That's great. Um, so, uh, we actually nationally, uh, our, uh, Santa Sid, who had been, uh, at the mall of America for, you know, 25 years, he went to a, a national convention and he, and he saw Santa Larry there and gave him our business card and said, oh. Hey, they're, they're looking, you know, like, contact them so that's how we found how we found there's this. a national santa convention santa Larry. Oh, there's oh, there's there's a convention. all yeah. over the country <laughs> and Interesting. but that yeah we were so fortunate to get connected with him that way too so you're entrepreneurs small business owners in a really massive building what advice would you give to somebody who wants to start a business who might be afraid uh, the f- it's both scary. from an artistic perspective yeah. and uh <laughs> operational. It, it is scary and it's it's going to be scary. Um uh, we were fortunate that I had managed the business for years before we um took it over. So I knew how it worked. I knew the ups and downs of it. Um it, you know a, the difference between, you know, the big the big chains and stuff is that uh you're it you're the end and yeah. you survive by how well your business does. So, you know, you have to, you have to know that risk when you step into it and you have to put your whole self into everything that you do. Um, so, I cool. mean, that's really like you, you have to know that you want to do this and you're passionate about it and that, 
is the direction you want to go so that that Awesome. And, and, and one last quick question, then I have five quick questions after the <laughs> one last quick question, if that's all right. One last quick question. When do appointments open generally for Santa <laughs> experience? Sure. Well, uh, usually it's around uh, Halloween time, Yep. Um, but it's as early as August that people start asking when it's going to open up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's why I'm asking. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so it's always, uh, it's right after Halloween where that calendar opens up and yep. we get the mad rush of uh, families going out there and trying to secure their spots. And, so. and the website really quickly for both Professor Z's and Santa Experience. Yeah, it's ProfessorZ's.com. Perfect. And then the Santa Experience MN. Perfect. So please visit them. I'm going to end really quickly with five quick questions. Grant, you're welcome to participate as well. Don't Great. think about your answers just right off the top. They're yes. going to be kind of holiday slash Santa themed, okay. if that's all right. All right. Um, the first one might be tougher for Grant, but we'll go sure. here. We'll start down here. Your favorite funniest photo moment you've experienced? Oh, gosh. Uh, for There's so many for <laughs> Santa. One. There's so many. Costume. Um, uh, oh, costume. Yeah. Costume photos. Um, I, I, seriously, there's like a million. Yeah, we do a, moments. we do a costume contest or a theme contest. Love and it. one of my favorites was they all dressed, uh, a, a very large family dressed as characters from the Wizard of Oz. Love it. Just okay. sticks out in my mind. Uh, my kids are in the silly photo phase, so I can't like get a normal photo with them at all right now. And <laughs> it's just like that's where my <laughs> memory is. Oh, yeah. Oh, so oh, there was the Jurassic Park group that were older oh, kids. Yes. They came there in, they were dressed like Jurassic Park, and then one was in the T Rex, the blow up T Rex thing, and they Love were all it. running oh, away from the Santa amazing. was running yeah. away with them. Yeah. That, that, was, was, that was a fun one. Yeah. I love that was a good one. Yeah. Uh, favorite holiday song. Oh gosh. Oh, I love uh, I love a good old white Christmas. Uh, yeah. Run Run Reindeer. I'm Rudolph. It's classic Rudolph. Holiday song you get sick of hearing every year. Mariah Carey. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> no. uh, that's, that's yes. been played, yeah. right? You've heard of it, right? You've heard it before. I can't argue with that. We played it in the like I mean, every 10 you know, minutes. It's, yeah. It may be the first time you hear it during the season. You're like, all oh, right, Christmas is here. But then after that, it's, it's like, just, yeah, yeah, that's true. I love that. <laughs> Favorite holiday treat or drink? Oh, got to love the cookies and the fudge. Um, yeah, uh, fudge. Rachel's father makes like world class fudge. Ooh, I'm, okay. I'm Share promoting it with the staff. his fudge. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Christmas wreaths with the little red hot. Oh, uh, those, those are, are good. Yes, yes, exactly. All right, uh, Rachel, Lando, Grant, thank you all so much for joining the conversation today. It's fun to kind of catch up and hear your stories about how you got started at Mall of America and how you continue to grow. And for anyone who has not visited Professor Z's or old time photos, or the Santa experience, please do so because these are good folks. They offer amazing things for our guests and our customers. And so everyone who's listening and watching, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of So Much More. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of So Much More. If you want to hear more, be sure to subscribe to our podcast wherever you find your favorites, including Spotify, Apple, or Google Podcasts. And you can also watch a video cast on YouTube. Go to podcast.mallofamerica.com to leave a review, ask a question, or give us an idea for the show. Until next time, thanks for listening. So Much More is presented by the Bloomington Convention and Visitors Bureau, the official destination marketing organization for the city of Bloomington, Minnesota. Before your next trip to Mall of America, visit bloomingtonmn.org for answers to all your travel questions, deals and packages for hotel stays, and so much more.